for coming. Let me have your attention, please. This is the 40th Annual Anderson Lecture Series. We are very honored to have the Dallas Wings coach, Coach Williams, here today. I want to remind everybody, we're going to turn these off and put them up, right? And what we're doing today is a presentation, and then we're going to have time for a question and answer period. So, question and answer period is part of the presentation, so please stay for that. I've asked Coach to allow for that. And then we'll adjourn everybody promptly at 12.50. Should be a little time, not much, if you wanted to come ask a question or get a picture with Coach uh, after the presentation. But please keep your seat, and we'll adjourn everybody at 12.50. Uh, I'm going to introduce now the Head of Community Relations for the Dallas Wings, Mr. Sean Alexander, down below. Give him a round of applause. Just as a reminder, is our new WNBA team that is in town. We're playing at the College Park Center starting in May. John, take it away. Thank you, thank you, Greg. Can everybody hear me okay? Yes. yes. Thank you, thank you. Uh, just want to say thank you for having the Dallas Wings basketball team here to speak with you today. Um, we formed, we just relocated from uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma, and um, we're we the new women's basketball team, WNBA basketball team, here in the DFW area. Um, just to give you a little bit more background about us, we were in Tulsa for six years. Uh, we made our first run in the playoffs last year out of those six years. So let's give those members a clap of thank And um, now that's, the, that's my transition to this guy here. This man here, he's the, he's what you would call the epitome of excellence. He, has the ladies working hard, uh, he has the team, he carries the team on his shoulders. He has the ladies uh, work ethic to the highest notch. Uh, he always preaches teamwork. Um, what more can I say about this guy? He's an incredible guy. And he's been in the league for over 20 years. He started off from Southern California. He's a native of Inglewood. Um, straight out of Compton, if that's what you want to say. <laughs> But um, before I get more into that, I just want to introduce himself as well. Got a couple videos for you, okay? So if you can, just bear with us for a little bit and uh, we're going to start the video. 20 years ago, I was just a little girl. I didn't know I'd average 20 points. Didn't know I'd have eyes in the back of my head. I didn't know I would grow to be 6'9". I didn't know I'd become an all-star. Didn't know I'd be a nightmare on the wing. But what I did know is if I could do what they did, I could be a pro. Watch me work. In my heart on the ground
But uh, without further ado, because I know y'all y'all not here to hear me speak, so without further ado, I'd like to welcome you guys to Coach Fred Williams and Dallas Wing. Sean, I appreciate that introduction there. Um, as Sean says, I've spent a lot of years in basketball, coaching basketball, and uh, 33 years to be exact, and all those years has been uh, coaching women uh, from Southern Cal, the University of Southern Cal, and, and coaching some of the greatest players that ever played a game, which is Cheryl Miller back in the day, uh, Lisa Leslie, who's uh, retired and been a Hall of Fame player, and Cynthia Cooper, who's been uh, has been one of the most uh, flamboyant uh, players to uh, ever play the game in the, in the WNBA and also in college. Uh, myself, shortly, my background, yes, I am from Compton, California, uh, and I grew up in Inglewood, California, played uh, basketball there, got a scholarship to Boise State University, and then went on to play uh, half a year uh, with the Utah Jazz, and then I got right into coaching, uh, being assistant coach at Southern Cal in 1983, I uh, spent 12 years there and then got into the pros with the WNBA uh, women's pro basketball. I'm a firm believer that women can really play this game just like the guys. And a lot of people say, well, uh, we don't really think that ladies can really do the things that guys do because they don't have the muscle, the mass the muscle and the strength. Well, you can see the tape in the film a few minutes ago, they do. They can shoot the basketball, they have a good shooting touch from the outside. And they also look good. They look better than the guys, you know, out there too. Um, but, you know, now they're starting to dunk the basketball, which is very phenomenal, you know, in our game. There's a few ladies that have done that already in our league. In the past 10 years, I think it's probably been about uh, maybe 15 dunks in a game that's happened. And it's going to happen even more because now these young ladies are growing to be 6'7 in high school, 6'5, 6'9, okay, some of them 6'10. And that's just here in the United States. Now, we look around the world, you're looking at players over in Russia and Europe, they're like, they're, their average size over there is about 6'5", you know, bringing a woman over. So uh, the body size and the muscle mass is, is starting to grow uh, with the women, but also it is, is matched up with what, you know, the guys can do on the floor, but also, you know, off the floor. I have myself here a little notes because I want to get a lot of things in uh, for you here. And, you know, today for me, it's more like quick tips and drills. Well, I don't have a dr drills for you. I don't have a basketball court for you, but I can tell you some of the drills we do to help the muscle, you know, as far as getting your muscle and getting shooting range and your legs and your mind and being having it mentally ready. Muscle nerves and movement. That is very important early for any athlete, for any person, even getting out of the bed, okay? To go to a glass of water, to drive a car, you gotta have that. And for for the young ladies that we have on our team, it's all about the mental stage of how you prepare your day, how you eat every day, how you physically get ready for that competition and for the next level. And the mindset for us being mentally ready for a person who is just as good as you are, all right? So you may be a tall and you may be 5'5", uh, five, five, and you may guard somebody who's 6'2", how are you gonna finesse that? How can my body structure and my muscle mass uh, are going to beat that? Well, it happens with the mind. And from the mind, it takes it on down to the muscle. And from the muscle, it takes it on down to your feet. And then it takes quickness. You gotta be clever all the time. Now, the body is like a flower. I tell my team that all the time. You have to nourish your body every day. That's water, the proper food, what you eat affects you the next day and maybe two days later. And having your mind right, you gotta see your body as a flower. You gotta nourish that, okay? On both sides, the guy's side too, and with the ladies. You have to think of your body as a flower. For as team travel and what we do in traveling, we start out our season this year, we play about three and a half games a week because of the Olympic break coming up. So they condensed our and combined our schedule really tough. So we, we start out this year three games on the road. Well, coach, how are you gonna get their mind and their body right for that? One, one is lifting weights. The other is physical condition and running up and down the floor and getting those muscles right. And the, the other is having the mindset of what you see visually 
on film and on tape of what you can do to take advantage of your opponents. But my thing is that the mental stage is having you being tough every day when you go to practice. Practice, practice, practice. Just like when you come to class or you go to seminar or session, you're going to take one or two things here and apply it to what you want to do in the future as your practice, as a student athlete, but also as when you go and be a teacher, a lawyer, a doctor, or whatever it's going to be. All right? Okay. How to succeed in professional sports. Have a game plan. All right? So I'm going to put on my game plan voice right now for my players. You have to have a game plan to be ready to go. You have to have a game plan to win. You have to have a game plan to get up. If you don't, you're going to lose. You're going to be defeated. Not only in a basketball court, but mentally. This is the most powerful muscle you have is your mind and your brain. That makes everything work. That's my Denzel Washington type deal right there, okay? I was, I was just trying to act a little bit. Okay, you got to know who are for you and who are against you or what you're trying to do. Everybody in here is in competition with each other. You just don't know that, okay, in a way, in competition with each other, all right? Trying to, you know, really get that good grade. You want to finish up, all right? Some of you are kind of still thinking about spring break a little bit, all right? Uh, you know, yeah, well, spring break, we know about spring break, okay? If we learn from others, we learn from camps, we learn from clinics, you learn from, I learn from you. Because I see smiling faces. I see people writing a few things down. I see a few people say, oh, this guy's nuts. What the heck are you talking about here? What's this got to do with muscles and, you know, kinesiology and physics and all this stuff? But no, it's open to the public, so we got a lot of people who wants to do a lot of things in here, all right? But I know that I have your attention because it's quiet. I don't have anybody heckling me and booing me and stuff like that. I get nervous when that happens. I have to have my mind set before I even get up here for that to happen. Believe me, I was having my mind. Last night I was thinking, oh man, there's going to be 10 people here today. If I look in here, there's probably about 200 uh, some people in here. All right? I can fold up and just say, oh, this is over with. But no, I had my mind ready, prepared. I built it up with good food in me water and ready to roll. Okay, learn to take wins with losses in class, in driving. Every time somebody cut me off, so you know, they cut me off on the freeway, I lost something. I kind of lose a little bit there, I bring myself back. Okay, and in, in, in games, the same way, having, losing a game and winning a game, how are you gonna come back and win the next one and the next one? When I first got in this league, I lost, well, I shouldn't say the first. Uh, when I was one team one year, we lost 17 in a row. Mentally for your mind, how are you going to get up for that? You lift weights harder. You start squatting hard, okay? You start getting down on defense, and you had that little crease in your bra right here and saying, I'm going to do it mentally and stand down and ready to roll. Well, to gather all this in about the body is here and being stable. This is the most important position for a basketball player. Okay? Your coach is here. She knows it's, it's triple, called triple threat position. And you probably hear it on TV say, triple threat position? What the heck is this guy talking about? Triple threat position? Well, you got to stay down and move your feet. Muscles. This is all your mu back muscles, legs your arms and hands, and somebody's guarding the ball and you gotta you know, run around and chase them like this you know, to try to steal the basketball. That's pretty, that's hard, okay? That's hard, you try to do that for 40 minutes, okay, or 18 minutes. So how do you build those muscles? You deal it with weights, we're down with squats to build it up. You deal it with arms, you know, with the, the bump, dumbbells, okay? Get the dumbbells here to build the muscles up here and stand up for the back, you stretch it out, you know, for the back. For the motivated player, the player that's motivated and not motivated, how can I motivate a player? How can I motivate a student in here? How can I do that? I can raise my voice and really make it clear. I could be real silent 
and say, this guy is weak. All right? But if I raise my voice, you'll hear me. You'll wake up. You'll understand that I have control. I have this moment and I have this vision to tell you that things can be done with the body that a lot of things that you cannot imagine that can be done. Slam dunk contest. <laughs> Guys dunking two basketball, jumping over cars and stuff like that. You, you kind of wonder how's all that? Well, that just didn't happen overnight. That guy's been practicing that, okay? With the body physics, physics of the body, defying gravity. Michael Jordan back in the day, starting from the free throw line, going up, defying gravity. That's, that's amazing, okay? We have a player in our, in our league now who's dunking the basketball consistently, which is great. It's bringing more notoriety to our league. Okay, um, do, your, do it your way or, and, and do it the right way. And that means whatever you do here as a student to be uh, a professor or be just a teacher or something in the world, do it your way, but do it the right way. Okay? Don't do it underhanded. Do it the right way. You build something. Okay? Your name brand is you. My name brand is Fred Williams. And I have an AKA name, which is Freddie Bass Williams. It's my music name. I you know, play music and all that other stuff, you know. So, but, uh, you know, your name brand is important. So keep your name clean and keep it out there because you just never know uh, where it's gonna, your name's going to take you uh, with, in a conversation, but also into the business world where you want to go. Okay. Now, get your mind motivated. Challenges of coaching. My challenges of coaching is getting my team, all my team motivated as one. That's tough. And I keep going back to the mindset that's really, because you got to talk to them first. You have to bring them in first. You have to see on each individual, which we have 12 on our team, you know, what type of mood they're in. A uh, person a long time ago, I got this from Pat Riley. He used to coach the Lakers a long time ago. I say, what's the toughest challenge you have as a coach? He says, well, you know, one is, you know, getting them in shape, you know, making sure that they eat right and, and drink properly. But the main thing is, you know, teaching and coaching 12 egos every day. They all got egos. That's all you're doing. You're coaching that every day, the mindset of, 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 of egos. Um, male in a female's world. I've been in it 33 years. I'm a male coach in women's basketball for 33 years. And you say, well, what did you learn from, from that when you first start? Well, when I first started, I was yelling at this player, come on, make the layup, get up. You don't move, you're not going, you're not, you didn't eat right, you, what's going on? And I had assistant coach tap me, which was a female coach assistant coach. Now, I know you just started coaching, but you have got to understand, these are women. We go through things each month. I said, <laughs> I said what? Oh, I learned, from, I learned from that from day one. You got to understand, I just don't have one. I have 12 to 15 that I have to understand. There's certain things that guys don't do. You think, you know, guys go through that? No, women are tough. They're tough, man. Seriously, they go through a lot of stuff. And, and you talk about the physics of the body and all that, that's really tough, all right? Women go and have, they have kids and come back and play basketball. That's tough, even when you think about it. You know, ladies, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm pushing for you ladies right now. You know, I'm pushing for you, all right? But it, it's, it's true. Uh, but that, that's, that's one of the toughest things that I've learned, and I've learned that throughout the years, and that's through my training with our trainers and from the doctors and, uh, and pro uh, professors letting me know that, hey, this is, you know, this is how it is in, in, in the world of, uh, of, of coaching women. Um, getting everybody on the same page, and that's from your, your staff, making sure that you have a great strength and conditioning coach who understands how to monitor uh, when you need to have practice uh, what should I say, when you need to have um, weights and do weights, because you can't do it every day. So you have to monitor that. If we got two back-to-back -back games starting out where we're playing New York, and then we play Indiana, and then a day off, and then we play Washington, 
we may have one weight training day in there. But the rest of the body's got to get some rest. Now you say mentally, physically, and it, met, it goes down to all the whole, your whole body, is that they got to get good rest, they have to have good water, uh, drink water, and food is important uh, at the beginning of those three series of those games. Now, you think about what we do as professionals, as coaches and players, and think about if you had to do that every day and work uh, 16 hour shifts for three days straight. You know, that's, that's pretty tough. You gotta really monitor your body and get some sleep. Well, for an athlete, our travel day and schedule and coaches is that we fly on a plane for maybe two hours, hour and a half, all depends where we go. We travel, uh, get on a, you know, a bus that takes us to a hotel and we sleep in you know, different beds at hotels all the time. You know, and then there's the weather. There's the difference of the weather, you know, conditionings out there that you gotta factor in. And then the last thing is you gotta factor in, you got 15 to maybe sometime 20,000 people screening at you for an hour and a half, mentally, physically. So you say, what does this pertain to the body? The mind, it all pertains to the mind all the way down through your muscle. And my muscle here with my mind is that I can breathe, I can live, I can see, I can do a lot of things, I can you know, share what I've, what I've seen and what I do. It's not hard. It's not hard you know, to keep your, your body in shape and keep it going. I've always kept that theory of your body is like a flower, okay? I'm 60 years old, okay? 60 years old, and I'm, I'm proud of the 60 because I kept myself up and kept myself going and been through a lot of things, you know, back in the day. All right, is it possible, is it possible for a lady to score 100 points in a game? Anybody think that, that that can happen? I'm asking a question right now. Is it possible? Or do you know if anybody has ever done that? 100 points in a game. Yeah, one right here. Reg, Reggie's sister? Yeah, that's, yeah Reggie, Reggie Miller's sister. If you know Reggie Miller, he played back in the day, Hall of Fame type guy, uh, Indiana Pacers and stuff, quick shooter. He was great, UCLA. But he had a sister named Cheryl Miller that played for me at Southern Cal. Um, recruited her out of Riverside Poly, and I'm sitting there on the front row, and this is, uh, this is before you had three-point shots, and I'm sitting there at the front row looking at her, shoot these baskets and making them, and all of a sudden she's got like 50 or 60 points. Well, in 1982, she scored 105 points in one game. So you say, well, is that physically, I mean, how do you do that? Well, the body and the mind, okay? Weight, strength. And the score was like 107 to four or something like that. I felt sorry for the other team, but you know, that's, that was, but she was hot. I mean, she was playing, and this was out three, this, no three-pointers. So Cheryl Miller did it back then. You think it could have been done again with another young lady to do that? Anybody think, of, you got, who did the other one, you know? Anybody know? Okay, I'll let you know who it is. Another young lady that I sat and watched at Morningside High School, and looking at her, this is, what, what year was it? Let me see, 1990. And she stood at 6'5", real skinny, and she started scoring all these points. Third quarter, she had like 60-something points. I say, wow, how can this happen? And she's, she's slender, not a lot of muscle, but it's just the physics of the body. No three-pointers. It was Lisa Leslie. You know what she did? She scored 101 points and a half. <laughs> and a half. And everybody's going by, ooh, Kobe had 80 and all that. Yeah, 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 80. But you understand, Kobe and them, they play longer, more quarters. These young ladies did it in 32 minutes. Okay? So the physical body for that to happen is phenomenal. I mean, they could do a seminar or speech on this themselves talking about how they made that happen, right? And I'm just like floored to see it. Now, I'm sitting back waiting with the Dallas Wings to see who's gonna uh, match that with uh, 100 points in the game. So I don't know if it's gonna be Odyssey Sims, Skyler Diggins, or who it's gonna be, but I'm gonna sit back and see if that's gonna ever happen. 
in this league. It possibly could. Okay. What I want to do is open up for any questions for anyone. Okay, if you have any questions for me right now, please go ahead and state to ask. You never know. It could be a grand prize or a Mercedes outside or whatever. <laughs> no, no. Here we go. How did you apply strength training to uh, their shooting technique without messing it up? How do you apply strength training to their shooting technique without messing it up? Well, that develops through, and I'm glad you said that. We didn't bring a basketball today, but uh, that ball gets a little heavy after a while. And I apply that with weights. You know, I think um, one of the uh, uh, weights that we do is with a, probably a 10 or 15 pound dumbbell, and we apply the shooting muscle to develop that muscle. We're talking about getting reps and, and getting that muscle going right there. I can get on a court right now today and have the same type of rep because I defined that early in my age and get that little shooting muscle down there to go. And then you talk about the range of motion of shooting is getting the basketball and then you're doing squats, okay, right in here to, to get your muscles strong right here. And then off the toes, you know, with a lift like that and with the follow through. So you, there's a lot of things you have to really show them. Uh, you don't want to lift weights like this, you know, because you don't shoot that way. If the basket's that way, the first thing, you know, coach will say, your feet must be pointed at the basket and straight in a proper way to go up. So many guys you see in the gym, they go in and shoot, they, they shoot like this and stuff. Well, their feet's that way, but the basket's that way. So the same way with uh, weights, you want to be down straight, lifting uh, the bar up, and with the follow through with the dumbbells, that helps a great deal, right and left hand. Any other questions? So I had somebody else over here. Don't be shy. There we go. Fred, what, what advice would you give a young Fred Williams who's going back and starting for the first time coaching a women's team or even an adolescent girls team? I would, uh, going back, and like if I was Fred Williams going back in coaching, well, right, my first lesson is to really go to a lot of camps first and really understand you know, the game, I kind of got jumped into it. But for me, if I were to go back, I would probably do more of a, just going to camps and, and really picking the brains of a lot of the, the coaches uh, in the intercollegiate world. Um, that's, they give you a lot of knowledge earlier about a few things. Uh, for us, you know, with a team, back then being assistant coach, you know, I was, I was always fiery. I thought I knew a lot, you know, hey, I'm the big T. I'm, you know, I'm recruiting all these players and stuff. But I tell you, I never had an ego. Because your ego gets in the way. Once your ego gets in, in your way, you're in trouble. Because then you start to develop enemies. And then you start to develop people who does not want to help you. But I've always kept myself with an even till type person where, you know, I'm going to listen to whomever. I listen to a little sixth grader or eighth grader. Sometimes they tell me about a team. But I will go back and do that and, um, you know, prepare my team just as I would do right now. And that's with respect and dignity for the game. You know, this is a really, really fantastic game. And, you know, the game's put a lot of bread on my table, you know, over the years. And, of course, there we go. You said you spent time in the NBA. Yeah. Uh, between the NBA and WNBA, which would you say women or men have more tenacity? Uh, what do you mean by, by, by tenacity? Uh, be honest with you, women. I, I, women. I mean, I, really. Okay, and I'm going to challenge you to come there. I'm selling tickets now. I'm challenging you to come this summer <laughs> to come see the ladies, you know, play. You know, I know some of you kind of go away and disperse during the summer that go to your, your homes, but if you got a WBA team in your area, please go and see them play personally because they get down and get mean, man. I'm telling you, it's a lot of elbows throwing, and, you know, officials, they don't call a lot of stuff. I'm always yelling at them. You know, and, but they, they are really vicious. The guys are vicious because they get up and dunk, and that looks vicious. The ladies get vicious with, you know, elbows here and physical play and, you know, boxing out. That's, it's, that's a work of art, you know. It really is. And I, you know, from my NBA days of, of, of playing, just my short, you know, playing days, it was just, you know, just, you know, playing with the preseason game with the Jazz and stuff and, you know, get the playing and going out. So I got beat out by a guy named John Stockton. 
I knew what to do then. You know, I said, I got to go. You know, I got to go ahead and, you know, be a coach somewhere. <laughs> but uh, I, I, I enjoyed the experience and all that, but it was great. Any other question? Yes. Biggest influence in my coaching career? Um, I would say that all the coaches, and I'm, I'm being really broad with this, I think of really seeing all the coaches and players that um, I've been on the floor with, uh, especially the early, excuse me, early. Like, you know, we won two national championships right away in 1983 and 84 back to back. And that kind of spoiled myself real quick, but I loved it. I had opportunities to go on the men's side and do things, but I didn't want to start all over again, you know, being a grad assistant or something like that. So I was right in the mix as a full-time coach and helping an organization, helping ladies, you know, develop into some of the best uh, females in the world, you know, who are now Hall of Fame players, who's been Olympians. But the most gratifying thing for me is just to see, you know, players and, and coaches come back and, you know, you know they want to hear what I got to say or get my take on things, but just to see them say a few nice words about me in the newspaper, that's great, that's good or whatever, but other than that, I don't ask them for no money, I don't ask them to come back and do things, they do that, you know, pretty much on their own. You got a fine team here, though, you got two great teams here on campus, I watched them play uh, this uh, past uh, winter and stuff and, and fall, and they, they do a fine job, you know, and it's not easy to be a, a competitive team, you know, with a lot of these schools, you know, out here. And uh, your team, your coaches out here, UT Orleans is doing a great job, and they're only going to get better and better. With us here at the WNBA, we're just going to bring more exposure because we're bringing TV. We're doing some things here during the summer that's going to bring exposure to the school. All of y'all are going to be proud of that. I'm proud. I'm proud to be here. I'm proud of your questions. Okay? I'm proud of that, man. You know? I mean, I, 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 I really am. I, I live in Atlanta. I have a home in Atlanta. I still live there off and, off and on, but this is my new home now. Everything's bigger and better in Texas. <laughs> That's what they say, right? Yeah, question. Um, so you play college ball. Um, so I want to coach high school girls basketball. What's the best way for me to get experience? Because I didn't play college ball, but I played like first grade to 12th grade. So what's the best way to get into it? Uh, she said she 